Hi, today I'm going to continue my discussion of fraction mechanics. I earlier talked about linear elastic fraction mechanics and elastic plastic fraction mechanics, that is the J integral. Today I'm going to talk about a new kind of theory that extends the J integral to other cases that may be of interest. And this is something called configurational mechanics and crack driving forces. And uh, this is one way one can think about a, perhaps a fraction mechanics 2.0, a little bit more advanced version that may be useful for polymers specifically. So let's start by reviewing a little bit about elastic plastic fraction mechanics and the J integral. As you may recall, the J integral is given by the energy that's released during a crack growth event. And the J integral is path independent. So it's a quantity that's always the same as if you take a path around the crack tip. What the problem with this is that it only applies to linear elastic materials and ma non-linear elastic materials, and the material has to be time independent. So no rate effects, no relaxation, and you can only do monotonic loading because uh, virtually all materials will undergo uh, some amount of hysteresis during cyclic loading. So there are some si significant problems with the J integral in practice because of that. The concept of crack driving forces is really interesting. It can be used for any material model. That sounds really good because if you're interested in many types of viscoelastic, viscoplastic material models, and the, the crack driving forces and configurational mechanics can also be studied during cyclic loading. It's no limitation regarding unloading and restrictions. And what is this? Then configurational forces or crack driving forces are thermodynamic forces that are responsible for the motion of defects in materials. So that's kind of like a formal way to define these quantities. And they are generated if the total energy of a body changes due to the position of those defects. So that's how you would study the defect growth uh, due to the change in energy. And so this is really sounding really interesting. And if you haven't heard of this before, you may be surprised to see that this is available right now in ANSYS. You can plot these quantities in ANSYS today if you're interested. So I'm going to try to motivate this a little bit and talk about the equations here. And it starts with the Eschel energy momentum transfer tensor. I remember when I uh, learned about this a long time ago back in grad school, I wasn't really understanding the concept and, and like how this applies to fraction mechanics at that time. But this is really the quantity of interest to start with. This is a tensorial quantity, just like a stress is. W is the en energy, really, um, stored energy. This is the deformation gradient, and this is first peak or purely like of stress. So this is a quantity that your finite element program could plot the contour of if it had this as an option. Most don't, but this is a quantity that is as fundamental as stress or strain in some sense, and it has the dimensions of stress. And the crack driving force, the, the concept we're after here, is given by this equation down here. It's the divergence of the C tensor, the energy to momentum transfer tensor. So it's the divergence in this form here. And um, how does this work in, in, in real life? Uh, we will get to that. But remember now, if you look at these equations here and the, the way I derived it, this applies to any material model. There is nothing about this that says that it has to be nonlinear elastic, for example, or strain rate independent. So how would we actually use this? Well, the, the equation at the bottom left is, again, the one from the previous page. In a finite element setting, this can be very easily calculated during post-processing. At post-processing step, then if you simply look at the Gauss points, you integrate over a finite element, you look you integrate over the Gauss points, you integrate over the shape functions, and then you do the, 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 the derivatives like you typically do in a finite element setting with shape functions. This is the Eschelby be tensor. And then we have Gauss weights. And then the force on each node can be calculated by assembling these element forces as typically done. So this is very basic from a finite element uh, viewpoint. You can very quickly calculate these configurational forces, crack driving forces at each node in your finite element mesh. And what's interesting about it, though, is, is this. If you look at the tip of a crack, you can then show that the crack driving force uh, is equal in magnitude to the J integral. And the direction of the crack growth is given by the opposite of the crack, the vector here, the force vector, configurational force vector. 
And there's just a dot product, and EC is the crack growth direction. So you find a crack growth direction directly from the con configurational force or crack driving force in this way. You can also convert this uh, scalar equation or this, this vector dot product equation into a uh, line integral, a path integral around the crack tip using the divergence theorem as shown here. It's a very simple equation to calculate. You have this uh, configurational uh, uh, tensor, you have M, which is the uh, outward normal to the path, but this then becomes equal to the J integral 2 in the limit as the radius of the path goes to zero. So this is showing that the, the, one of the limitations of this uh, configurational force or crack driving force is that it's not path independent. It depends on the path, and you get the J integral in the limit as the path goes to zero. And you can also use this other equation for it. So it's really interesting that it, it has these quantities, these abilities, and it removes some of the problems with elastic plastic fraction mechanics. I have a few pictures here for how this looks in ANSYS. Here's just a, a screenshot from one of the documentations from ANSYS showing the crack driving force. These are vectors at nodes, if you remember. Here's the vector here. This magnitude of this vector is the J integral. You also get uh, vectors of crack driving forces at boundaries of, of, of parts, and that's not uh, so interesting here, perhaps, but that's just the nature of this, how it works. And if you want to read more about the ANSYS thinking about this, this is from the ANSYS manual. They talk about material force calculations, which is interesting and perhaps a little unfortunate in ANSYS. Uh, the material force evaluations are supported by the following material models. As you can see here at the bottom, you can see the, the ANSYS APDL commands for doing this. There really isn't any reason why you couldn't do this for any material model, but these are the ones that are supported today. So to summarize, crack driving forces is an extension of the J integral. It's really interesting because it allows you to analyze time dependent materials, viscoplastic material models, you can have loading and unloading. And uh, it requires a little bit more work here, I think, from the research community to demonstrate how well this works in many practical applications. But the theory is available. People are looking into this in different ways. And I thought it would be interesting to talk about it here. Uh, if you have any questions about this topic, feel free to ask them below.